patient can close or open whatever rinse tank they need. We're going to do a limited rinse. Just get the tooth wet, not the cotton roll. I'm just, rem I'm just cleaning the tooth. I'm not removing the smear layer. The only thing that removes the smear layer is going to be our phosphoric acid edge. So I'm going to retract. I'm going to check for operability to make sure that everything is coming out correctly. I'm going to place my phosphoric acid etch on the enamel favo surfaces. I'm going to wait 10 seconds. 10 seconds has gone by. Now I'm going to put it in the dentin. I'm going to agitate and make sure all the bubbles are popped and put the phosphoric acid etch on the dentin for 10 seconds. Okay, so it's going to combine, stay open for me. My patient stay open. I'm going to do a limited rinse. I'm going to hover over and suck up the viscous material, and then I'm going to do a limited rinse. And start with a little bit of stream of water, and I could do a slurry. I'm going to rinse that for five to ten seconds, and then I'm going to air dry. I'm only going to thoroughly dry the enamel leaving the dentin glistening. We want the enamel to glisten because we don't want to have desiccated it, meaning we don't want to dry out the de uh, dentin tubules, um, collagen fibrils, because if they're dry, they're going to lay down flat and they're going to block the dentin tubules, which is not going to allow for the resin to penetrate down through the dentin tubules. So we want to keep them fluffed, so that means slightly moist. So now that I have a, an etched enamel that looks white and frosty, I'm going to do one layer, or a layer, of my bonding agent, which is my unfilled resin. Using a fulcrum, I'm going to go inside the cavity preparation to get all of the dentin coated with my unfilled resin, which is my bonding agent, and put it on the enamel surface. Everywhere where I want my composite to stick, I'm placing my bonding agent. We're using the total etch system, and you know this because we use the phosphoric acid etch. Go around my patient's face, I'm holding up a pen. I'm going to cure this for 10 seconds. Make sure that it's 90 degree angulation, that my wave lengths are 90 degrees onto the focal core. After 10 seconds, the um, unfilled resin is going to be cured. I've created the hybrid layer, which is a combination of the dentin and the resin. That shiny, sticky layer that I'm looking at is the oxygen inhibited layer, which is uncured resin, which acts as my bonding agent. So now I can take my composite, and I'm going to put two millimeters of my flowable composite onto the pulpal floor and axial walls if I want and that's going to go into all those dentin tubules that were filled with resin which is going to increase my adhesion or I should say I'm sorry my retention of my curing light because this has fillers in it I need to increase my curing another uh, for 20 seconds I'm just fast forwarding, that's 20 seconds. So now I have my um, oxygen inhibited layer again, which we know is our uncured resin, which is our bonding agent. So now I'm gonna take my universal composite, which has got more fillers in it, and then I would extrude it into the cavity preparation. And then I would take my some type of plugger or composite instrument and place it down into there and I would do it again two millimeters in thickness <clears throat> and then I would cure it making sure that again it's 90 degree it's positioned 90 degrees perpendicular to the long axis of that surface where it's wherever direction it was set at so that because it's got fillers we're doing it for 20 seconds And once it's cured for 20 seconds, we would
take our explorer because we think it's filled take our explorer and run across it to make sure that it's cured and if there's a void or something I can easily add to the void because I have my oxygen inhibited layer which is my uncured resin which is my bonding agent and then I would wipe off the uncured resin let my patient close do a lemon rinse to get that bitter taste out of there so If I had over etched my tooth, we know that phosphoric acid etch is eating away the calcium tooth surface, okay? You know, the stem from where it originates. So if it's over etched, you need more tooth space to bring it on. You need to the balance of the tooth work. You need to have some tooth sensitivity because now you're getting close to the mirror. You can see it, right? So we know we're going to over etch. Okay. If you under etch, something else will be clear. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to say it again. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you under etched, that means you're not removing all the smear layer. So if you remember, if you visualize that plugged dent tubule, there's a picture on the on the wood floor for that. If it is plugged, meaning the smear layer is filling that dent tubule, then our resin's not gonna be able to get in the dent tubule. So we're decreasing the retention of our restoration. So you have to over, you can't over etch and you can't under etch. Right? Okay. Um, if we post op sensitivity would be because if, if we were over etched. Makes sense. If okay. it's under etched, you could also have post op sensitivity because it's not the dent tubules aren't sealed. Okay. And they also would increase your chances of losing your restoration. Okay. okay. Um, if I left my curing long, curing light on too long, this is a form of energy, right? Our wavelengths. So if I leave that on there too long, you know, this is energy. Energy produces heat. So if we leave it on there for too long, we're going to heat up the tube. Just like if we're using high-speed handpiece without water, yeah. it heats up the tube, right? Okay. So we can cause inflammation and pulp. So okay. it's important that we don't over-cure. Okay. Um, so we know that when we place our bonding agent, which is our unfilled resin, which is our bonding agent, <clears throat> which is our heat adhesive, when we place that onto the dentin and onto the enamel, we've created adhesion because they're not like properties. Okay. When we cure our resin, we have that oxygenated layer, and we place our first layer of composite, and we cure it, because of that um, oxygenated layer, we have bonding, but it's also cohesion because they're like properties, because they both have resin in them. Okay. Right? Yeah. Both, uh... Flowable and packable. Okay. They're both packable. composite. One okay. just has more fillers in it than the other. Right. Okay. Okay. Did you say that the unfilled resin is going to be one that's flowable, but once I got that cohesion because they both have resin in it? Because they both have resin in it. That's right. Wait, say that again one more time. You're going to have cohesion between the bonding agent, which is the unfilled resin, and your composite because they both have resin in them. Okay. So there's. Cohesion. But it was, it was adhesion between the dentin and the unfilled resin. That's right. Okay. The tooth Got it. and the bonding agent. Okay. Those are adhesion. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. I got it. The only bad thing I noticed is the light blocked out. <laughs> but um, I got it though. I got okay. it. Yeah. Word, you hear the I saw words. like the main point of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's not you know all of it, everything, but that's a lot of the um. 